Sabbath, everyone. All right. So shall we begin with a word of silent prayer? Amen. What I have on the board here, I'm not, I'm not going to go through extensively. I'm not going to go through each point because I believe every, every human in here um, understands all these, all these histories, basically all these things that took place. These are all histories and events that took place in prophetic history that, that we all understand. But I'm just going to explain what I have up here first. So this top line here, we have the, the line of Moses. Second line, I have the line of Christ. Third one is the line of the three decrees. <clears throat> this last line, you have the, the line of the Millerites. So, the line of Moses um, is, Moses is a type of Christ. And Moses is the alpha to, to the line of Christ, which is the omega. Because when you, when you look at the line of Moses, look at the line of Christ, they follow the very same thing. You have the birth of Moses, and Moses is a what? The deliverer christ is the true what deliverer and moses is just typifying the work of christ and previous to their, their births they were in bondage moses what um they're in bondage to whom egypt and and we know the bible tells us that egypt is the dragon it's ezekiel um 28 i believe she tells us this and prior to the birth of christ they were in bondage the jews were in bondage to who to Rome. And Rome, as we see on the chart, pagan Rome, is this dragon. It's the time period that Christ came in. So we have this in bondage to the dragon, in bondage to the dragon, direct parallels. So before the birth of Moses, which is this, which is a type of the deliverer, bondage to the dragon. Prior to the birth of Christ, we have this um, bond in bondage to the dragon. And she tells us plainly, Moses, you just type Moses, type in Christ. So she plainly tells us that Moses is a type of Christ. So their births must be parallel. One, one fled, fled because, um, because the king put in a law to go and kill, kill the Hebrews. Same thing here. The king put in a law to go and kill the Jews. Their histories are directly the same, and they're, they're illustrating the very same things. Now, and um, when we see, when you come out to the end, the last way, Mark, the last way mark in the time of Moses is Passover. It's the, the this is where Passover Passover was the. You just said a couple weeks ago. What's the, the phrase she uses? Yes, Passover was the birth of the Hebrew nation. Yes, that was what I'm looking for. So ends off with Passover. It's the birth of the Hebrew nation. Then the end of the line of Christ, is Passover because he died at Passover, and Paul tells that Christ is our Passover. So the end of the line, line of Moses, is the same, is parallel, excuse me, to the line of Christ, where the end is the Passover. And when you go through each way, you have the burning bush, where now Moses is being raised up before, before, um, before he goes forward to Pharaoh, and you have John preparing the way before Christ so that he can go, go and, and deal, deal with the dragon, basically, deal with Satan, because at Passover, his head was crushed. So Christ was dealing with the dragon. Moses was dealing with the dragon. So, you know, Paul tells, that, Paul tells us that circumcision is the same as baptism in Galatians. And, ah, oh, that's why I want to change this. I want to change. You can, first miracle, yes. That's what I wanted to change it to. It does happen in front of the elders. But I want to change it specifically to first miracle. Because when you look up what Sis White says with Christ... At Cana, amen, this was his first miracle, direct parallels. One is the Alpha, one is the Omega. It's the beginning, what's the end? And Christ illustrates the end, this line, by the beginning. Moses, just very same things. Parallels fits like a glove. The first miracle in which Moses did with the leprous hand, um, he put in his bosom, took it out, and it was leprous. The, the water went to blood. And um, 
the, serp, the, the, the rod into a serpent. And at the marriage of Cana, Christ took the water, turned into blood. Same thing that, um, the water turned into wine. Same thing um, Moses did, which is, amen, which is blood. Now, now when Moses comes before Pharaoh, he's coming there to go, go and um, bring, down, bring down Egypt if they do not repent, repent of their sins. And many people swear, many people flee and turn from Christ um, in this time period. But that you, you, you get that from a quote which he speaks about, I think, in Selected Messages. And when Christ began his public ministry, he cleansed the, he cleansed the temple. Uh, maybe you have that quote in, this, in the notes here. Think. Yes, we do. Yeah, when she tells that when Christ began his public ministry, he cleansed the temple. This one TC is the first temple cleansing. And then when you go in the line of Moses, after the, the, the three plagues, the um the Egyptian the magicians, excuse me, say this is the finger of God, because they could not duplicate um the, the plagues anymore. So from that time forward, the plagues only fell upon who? The Egyptians and never fell fell upon the Hebrews that were in Goshen, and and at the triumphal entry, this was the strongest evidence, because no no one can gainsay what took place here. Just as at, at the finger of God, when when um when when they they says the finger of God, they can't they cannot overthrow it. The, at the triumphal entry, it was a direct fulfillment of prophecy in Zechariah. They could not over um overthrow it, and they. Pharisees tried to quell, quell, quell the, the triumphant songs of the people. They could not do it. And say it again. Amen. In their hearts. Amen. So, and as we said, it comes down to Passover. But we have, and she tells that among the last acts of Christ is the second temple cleansing. And she has another quote. Where she states that second temple cleansing is the close. So, so we're bringing the close with the. The close, the end. So the Passover, line up with the Passover. So now we go to the line of the decrees. You have these three decrees and then the temple. The temple is reared up and the temple is perfected, she says. But prior to that, the first way mark is the fall of Babylon. This is the, this is the time of the end. We have the fall, of, the fall of Babylon and the Jews were in bondage in Babylon for 70 years. And now we're going to the line of the Millerites, which is a parallel to it, which, which is the omega to these, to these, um, to, to the line of the decrees. Let's put this in here from now. Okay. The Christians were in bondage to, to who? Before 1798. Amen. Amen. Spiritual Babylon. So we have Babylon. Spiritual Babylon, it's the Alpha, it's the, it's the Omega, and and we see the first the first decree, um, Michael comes down to go in to go in um, help Cyrus to put put forth the this law so that so that the the saints can go free, and at August of eighteen forty, no less a person than Jesus Christ came down. Direct parallels. Oh, another I forgot to say this with, with these two waymarks here. The dove, sorry, not the dove. The Christ came down. It was the angel that came down, and then the dove came down here. But you have Christ coming down here, which is Michael. Then you have Christ coming down here and having his feet upon um, the earth and the sea. Then after the first first decree um, took place, the foundation of the um, of the temple was laid. The foundation of the of the temple of the the spiritual temple is laid here, and this was the 1843 chart by Charles Fitch. Let's put four and three. It's a 43 chart, and she tells us that the charts are the rock of ages. The rock of ages is the foundation for us. This is where our feet must be planted at Seven Adventists. So we have these direct parallels. The first decree lines up with the first angel's message. The test of this first angel. And the second decree lines up with this, the test of the second angel from April 19th onward up until October 22nd. We have the third decree, and you have the, the third angel's message. And when the third decree passed, um, it pointed, it was on 457 B.C., and the 2300 days began and ended on 
October 22nd, 1844. So these are direct parallels. So that was a very quick run through to show, sh show these four lines, but you can go look at every wear mark on these lines and, and gain a plethora of knowledge from them and it's all pointing forward to the son-in-law crisis more, more fully. So now have these two lines up here and this line, this line of the movement, just put it for short, movement and it's the line of the, it's the line of the church, St. Adventist Church. So, and as we see here in all these, all these, um, all these waymarks here, all these lined up, it's the raising up of a messenger. You have Moses, John, Daniel, and Miller. So, in this time period, in this line, you have a messenger being raised up as well. And, and the one that was raised up at that time to go bring forth the message was Jeff. And, and um, the message he bore was the message that came at the beginning. Likewise, Daniel, because Daniel was studying the books of Jeremiah. John was studying all the, all, um, all the old past as well. And Moses was, he was studying the old past as well. And Miller was looking back at all of these histories to understand what's coming, coming in his time. So likewise, in this history, it's raising up of a messenger to go forward and give, give the message that came in 1989, showing the, um, the time of the end, the battle between the North and the South. So... Now with these two lines, you see many parallels, and yeah, down at, at this point in Midnight Cry, you have you have this people raised up and 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 going forward, and Jeff Jeff is just a uh, a type, yes, Jeff Jeff is just a type of what Christ really wants, because um, all the types pass away, and the anti-type is what is what stands. Although he has turned turned and left, the truths in which and which he has put forth are still still correct because it's truth but but our eyes are to be on Christ not upon the man We're supposed to follow the word and not and not and not the man because Christ says do do what they say but not as they do it's what this is it's what is happening with Jeff you, you keep you keep you keep all the right things that Jeff has said but all the wrong things that he's doing castles aside because that's foolishness so we all know at 9-11, these there was a destruction that had that that took place because of the laws that were put in um, excuse me, because of the alliance that happened in 1989. So likewise in at and this CSL is the Civil Sunday Law, when this time comes, there will be destruction in the cities because of the law that's being put in place as well. And um Okay, yes. And 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 when we got to 2014, in this movement, there was a shaking, it's a temple cleansing. It's a, it was a, now, this way you have these two groups being manifested, or yeah, you have these two groups being manifested. One, one, one who has oil in their lamps, and one who doesn't have oil. And this, is, this experience is only a type, it's only typifying what's going to happen at the Sunday Law. When, when, when Christ comes and and he cleanses out his church, and many will fall away, but many will still hold on, hold on to God's word and continue on up until the end. And these two waymarks are the end. And like what we see, second temple cleansing, yeah, from, from the, the history of Christ. And we also said that at CSL, at the end, there's a destruction that, that will take place upon America and upon the cities, cities throughout, um, throughout the earth. But that is only a type as well. Just as 9-11 was just a type. All these, all these destructions happening now as we speak are only types of what's really going to happen in this son of law crisis. It's going to be very horrible in this time. And Sis White likens this, this time period as the shaking of the earth. It's going to be a horrible time. But... The destruction here is only typifying what's going to happen when, when it's a shut door for Seventh-day Adventists. Because right here is the shut door for those who known of the truth before it went to the Adventist structure. And then, it's all typifying here, where now it's the shut door for all Seventh-day Adventists. Because they, they, they would have had to make, made a choice for standing for Christ or for Satan. And this is now when you have 
men truly being sealed. Prior to this, the, the, you have only types of being sealed or, or illustration of being sealed. But at this point, it's when men are truly sealed, the literal seal of God upon their foreheads. So, that being said, we'll go over some of these notes now. And um, we'll look at the Son of Law crisis and how it develops. Because this is where... This is where Christ really want, wants to bring us so that, so that we can pass this test. So everything prior to the Son-in-Law is just, is just practice for, for this. Although it is very real and you can ver very well fall away and, and go on inside of Satan. But, he, but the real test of the Son-in-Law Christ is what all Adventists know, on, know and understand. So, um, let's, oh yeah, this, yeah, that's why I said that. Because prior to the Son-in-Law, no... I, I remember myself years ago, I thought that when the Son of Law comes, I'll just say, no, no, and I'll stand, stand for Christ. It's, it's, not, it's not that easy. And there's, Satan, has, Satan has, um, has avenues and means to go and thwart God, God's plan and, and catch, catch those who are not watching, on the, um, watching the signs of times. So... Everything prior to this point is still a test, and we must understand this history. Because if you don't understand what's, what's coming up to the Son of Law when the Son of Law comes, it doesn't really matter to you because you've already fell prior to that point, if, if you had not known. So can I read it for the first line? The first quote, 9MR 4.5. Amen. <clears throat> so... We know Christ is this pattern man, and Christ has left a pattern for all these histories. Every history has a special truth for that time. And for, for the time we are in, we have this special truth. It's line upon line. It's, it's following the pattern. Here, it was to, they were to leave to go make a sanctuary. They were gonna, um, Christ, Christ came here and died so that the spiritual sanctuary might be built. The sanctuary is this pattern. So we have the pattern here, the pattern here. The third decree was to go and rebuild the temple, the sanctuary, which is the pattern. October, October 22nd left us the pattern for St. Adventist. First, second, and third angel's message. This is the pattern. So we have to bring all those patterns together into one and bring it down to the end of the world, into our history in which we're now in, which is pointing forward to the Son of Law crisis, to, to this, the, sec, the, the line of the church. So Christ is this pattern man, and we must follow the pattern. And... As children, as you teach a child, it is easy to teach a child showing patterns. It's blue, red, blue, blue, red, blue. So then they'll know, oh, the next one must be blue, red, blue. Because they're following the same pattern. And Christ, Christ knows that we are as children. So he leaves us this pattern to, and shows us the same thing over and over and over again. So that we know that, okay, divine symbol comes down, divine symbol comes down, divine symbol comes down, divine symbol comes down. So what would happen here? Divine symbol comes down. Every one of these third way marks shows the same thing. Well, divine symbol must come down here. This shows a birth. This shows a birth. Um, yeah, this this shows a birth. This shows a birth. This shows coming out of captivity. Shows coming out of coming out of captivity. So when you come down to actually the true time of the end, which is the Sunday law, which I don't have that line up here, which would be this first way mark as well, would be coming out of captivity and it's a birth. Bring all these things together. But Christ just constantly showing us this pattern, the pattern, the pattern. Just showing us exactly what it is over and over and over again. And she tells us that Christ repeats, um, Christ does not repeat things that are of no great consequence. The reason why he's repeating it is because we, we need it and we're slow of understanding. But continuing on, the work of God in the earth presents from age to age a striking similarity in every, not just some of them, in every great reformation or religious movement. So there's a similarity in Every single one is a striking similarity. The principles of God's and the women are ever the same, as is shown with all these histories. The poor movements of the present, of the line of the movement, have their parallel in those of the past, all these histories prior. And the experience of the church in former ages has their lessons of great value for our own time. So all these former ages has lessons for the time we are in. Just take it, at, take exactly what is being said and it's, you just take God's word as it is. Christ says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, <clears throat> the Almighty. 
this is what we've just shown, the Alpha and Omega, Moses, Christ, decrees, Millerites, the line of movement, line for the Son of Adventist Church. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the what? Amen. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet what? Okay. So all these ancient things, even our own history, the time in which we are currently between 2014 and the midnight cry. So in this history here, from this point back, all these things are, are these ancient things that are pointing forward to things that's not yet done, to all these histories forward. So this is, the Lord really wants us to see this roadmap in which he's laid out for us so that we know exactly which step to take so that we won't fall into the pit. All right. Continue on. <clears throat> um, MS 41A, 1896, paragraph 34. Many are doing the same thing today in 1897. Because they have not had experience in the testing message, message comprehended in the first, second, and third angels messages. There are those who are searching the scriptures for proof that these messages are still in the future. They gather together the truthfulness of the messages, but they fail to give them their proper place in prophetic history. So she's dealt with this, um, with this issue previously. <clears throat> where people gather up, gather up the truth in God's word, but don't give it the proper place in history because... We see in their history, they had a proper place for prophetic history. They knew that Dan 40 was filled here, battle between the north and the south. They knew that the stars falling was a, was a, um, was a fulfillment of prophecy. They knew that this was a fulfillment of Daniel, Revelation 9. Excuse me. They knew Habakkuk 2 was being fulfilled. Habakkuk 2 and Matthew 25 was being fulfilled. They knew exactly where it was, and they marked all these things. She tells us that the leadings of the Lord are marked, and we must see it. And they, they knew all these histories, so we must know that. And this is why I'm saying that we, we cannot fail of giving them its proper place in prophetic history. Continue on. <clears throat> Therefore, such are in danger of misleading the people in regard to locating the messages. We have to understand where prophecy is being fulfilled in history and locate the messages correctly. They do not see and understand the time of the end. And all these are the time... Time of the end. And they're all, you have to bring all, how much of them, six of them together. They're all pointing forward to the Son of Law crisis, to this, to this test, this final test that we have to go through. They do not see and understand the time of the end or when to locate the messages. The day of God is coming with, with stealthful tread. But the supposed wise and great men are prating about higher education, which they suppose originates with finite men. They know not the signs of Christ's coming or of the end of the word, world. So, can I read it for the next paragraph, paragraph 35? The, the bold portion only, please. Actually, no, I want, yeah, the whole, the whole quote, please. Someone can read that please for me, please. The evidence, of, the evidence of soon coming of Christ is upon us, and many of us are our feet. We do not, <coughs> we do not half gather up the important truths that are for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. If we receive and believe the word of God, we should be farther in advance spiritually than we are today. Iniquity abounds everywhere, and the love of many has waxed cold. Unless we understand the importance of the moments that are swiftly passing into eternity, and make ready a people to stand in the great day of God, we shall be registered in the books of heaven as unfaithful spirits. The watchman is to know the time of the night. Amen. So we're all sent Adventists here. <clears throat> and we are the watchmen for the whole world. And sh this is telling us that we must know the time of the night. We must know, we must know the watches. We have to know every single one. And if you go look in God's word, there's four watches. We must understand every single one. We must know where we are in prophetic history. If we don't know where we are, you're going to be lost. Same thing with driving. If you're driving someplace and you don't know what, what exits you have to take, what road you have to be on, on the I-95 or the I-40, you're going to be lost. If you're trying to go to New York, you end up in Kansas. It doesn't make sense. You have to know where you are. So, um, oh, also, if there's any questions or comments, you can chime in at any point in time. Still Sabbath school, so if there's any interaction, by all, all means. 
go forward. 2SM 101.1. The great remarks of truth shown us our bearings in prophetic history are to be carefully guarded, lest they be torn down and replaced with theories that would bring confusion rather than genuine light. So we have these waymarks of truth, and she says we must guard these waymarks. It is imperative because Satan's object is to turn the signpost. Because she says that Satan's going to turn the signpost, take the Sabbath, and try to turn it to a point to Sunday. So, and it's the same thing with all the waymarks. Just like when they had to go to Jerusalem, they had heaps, high heaps, and they, have, and they know at where they were at each point until they got to Jerusalem. And this is all for us. It's all for us to get into New Jerusalem. We must know all the way marks till we get into the kingdom. Next quote, we read this last night. We'll um, begin with the bold. Historical events showing the direct fulfillment of prophecy were set before the people. And the prophecy was seen to be a figurative delineation of events leading down to the close of this earth's history. So it's a delineation of events leading down to the close. Is not the close of Earth's history. However, it is illustrating what, what will take place at the close of Earth's history. Because on October 22nd, 1844, what happened? The temple of God was opened. The heavens were opened. So at the close of history, we know the heavens will open, showing Christ coming. The third, third decree shows a temple being reared up and coming. When the close of history comes, the temple comes down out of heaven. At Passover, you have this lamb, the slain lamb, being, being on the cross. When at the close of history, the slain lamb will come. Same thing with um, in the time of, time of Moses. What came? The death angel. At the close of history, the death angel will come, cut down all the wicked. Just, all these things are just showing the close of, close of history. These are not, this is not the close of history because we're obviously past October 22nd, 1844. But they're illustrating and they're telling us they give us a picture of what will happen. You must bring them all together, as Miller said, and it all illustrates the literal close. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Exactly, the destruction of Jerusalem. <coughs> In the end, amen. So, because just as Suna was saying, she takes the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus and takes that that's showing the showing the destruction of the world so christ is telling giving us all these little all these layers and it's and you must bring them all together and it's telling it's giving us a picture of of what the end of the world looks like and because because she says pen cannot pen cannot picture the the scenes in these last days okay continuing on from the bold the last we we'll just read one sentence Yeah, we read the, the next sentence. The scenes connected with the working of the man of sin are the last features plainly revealed in this earth's history. So we're going to have to understand this, um, the, the, the scenes with the working of the man of sin because these are the last things in which we must meet before Jerusalem comes down, before we're, we are redeemed. And But to understand how... The working of the man of sin, how, how the man of sin will work in the last days. You must understand how the man of sin work in its former days. 2SM 103.1. The burden of the warning now, now to come to the people of God, nigh and afar off, is the third angel's message. And those who are, who are seeking to understand this message will not be led, will not be led, by the Lord to make an application of the word that will undermine the foundation and remove the pillars of the faith that has made St. Adventist what they are today. The truths that have been unfolding in their order as we have advanced along the line of prophecy revealed in the word of God are truth, sacred, eternal truth today. Those who pass over the ground step by step. So she's, she's clearly telling us that there are steps and you must, you're not jumping steps. You have to take step by step. Those who pass over the ground step by step in the past history of our experience, seeing the chain of truth and the prophecies, were prepared to accept and obey every ray of light. So, this is how the Lord knows that men, men will keep every ray of light if they have kept every step. Even though they live to 38 or to 49 or whatever and they die, if they kept every step, that's how God knows 
if they lived up to 1500, they would have kept every, every ray of light because they kept it step by step. So we are to know all these steps so that, so that we might live eternally, basically. So we, we must know every single one of these steps and we must guard these steps. <clears throat> Continue on, next paragraph. 2SM 104.1. Okay, yeah. All right. It says, 2SM 104.1 says, The leadings of the Lord were marked, and most wonderful were his revelations of what is truth. Point after point was established by the Lord God of heaven. That, that which was truth then is truth to date. But the voices do not cease to be heard. This is truth. I have new light. But these new lights in prophetic lines are manifest in misapplying the word and setting the people of God adrift without an anchor to hold them. This is what Jeff and Parminer are doing. They have this, they, they come and claim with this new light in these prophetic lines that they have, but it's, it's false. And Satan's effort is just to muddy the water to, because Satan knows that we use lines, the true use, use lines, so Satan will come and you um, have raise up his false men to go and use lines as well. So what happened with Janus and Jambres in the time of time of Moses? Moses threw down a rod. Jan Janus and Jambres threw down a rod, and and both rods turned into a snake. But the only difference is that Moses' rod ate up ate up the the rod of Janus and Jambres. So Satan will counterfeit every iota of what Christ does, just to just so that people can't clearly discern. What is true and what is error. Um, continue on before we left off. <clears throat> if the student of the word would take the truths which God has revealed in the leadings of his people and appropriate these truths, digest them and bring them into their practical, practical excuse me, life, they would then be living channels of light. But those who have set themselves to study out new theories have a mixture of truth and error combined and are trying to make these things prominent. Have, yeah, have. Okay, yeah, we'll just stop there, actually. Okay, 16, 17.4. Satan is constantly seeking to cast a shadow about these messages so that the people of God shall not clearly discern their import, their time, and place. So this is, this is exactly what's happening, happening now, where, where, um, where men come up with these, these prophetic lines. There's a mixture of truth and error. And this is Satan casting his shadow so that, so that people of God cannot discern their import, time, and place of exactly where we are. But, but they live and, and are to exert their power upon our our religious experience while time shall last. Next paragraph, 1SM 17.1. Can someone read the bold, please? Actually, sorry. Can you read the whole paragraph? Those who think to make the most of the, those who think to make the supreme difficulties of Scripture plain in measuring each other find that rule that which is inspired and that which is not inspired had better, had better cover their faces for the lives of men the still small voice spoke to them. For they are in the presence of God and holy angels who for, who for ages have communicated to men light and knowledge telling them what to do and what not to do unfolding before them scenes of joy and interest way marked by way marked in symbols and signs and illustrations. Amen. So these waymarks tell us what to do and what not to do. Because on at this waymark here, the Protestants began to shut their doors. So it's telling us when this th this this history comes, which is a par when this history comes in in these parallels, we are not to shut our doors against the light in which, which the Lord sensed. Even though it may come in a way in which we least expect it. We are not to rise up against the message. But it's telling us what to do and it's to Plant our feet upon the foundation, upon the rock of ages. So everyone these women are telling us what to do and what not to not to do, as, as she says here. Continue on. SW, October 9th, 1906, paragraph 4. Um, can someone read this quote as well, please?
you want to go ahead. Consider the prophecy of Malachi in connection with Daniel, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah, that the teacher of these books be carefully investigated, also the building of the temple and the temple service. Through the prophets, God has given us a revelation of what will come to pass in the last days of this earth's history, and the Jewish economy is full of instruction for us. Amen. So these histories are written there for us to show us exactly what will take place in the last days. We must compare and bring them all all, all together in connection. Malachi, Daniel, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah, these five books she just named. So now we're going to look at how this, how the beast came up previously to know um, how the beast will come up in our history. But before. Why did I put this in here? Okay, yes, 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 I remember now. All right, it says, 2SM 118.1. The prophet says, A son of the angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. He cried mildly with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is, and is become the habitation of devils. Revelation 18, 1 and 2. So, keep this in mind. This is the same message that was given by the second angel. Babylon is fallen. Um, Babylon is fallen because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What is that wine? Her false doctrines. She has given to the world a what? A false Sabbath. So when Babylon falls, she is giving this false Sabbath. Instead of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment and has repeated the falsehood that Satan first told Eve in Eden, the natural immortality of the soul. Many kindred errors she has spread far and wide. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So she clearly tells us here that um, Revelation 18 comes when Babylon falls. It's the fall, it's the fall of Babylon, and it's and it's when she gives this world a false Sabbath instead of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. So, and this is because. Okay, the Lord, when, when the Lord sends additional light, are we to accept it or to reject it? Accept it. So, when, when the Lord came, came here and showed them that the sanctuary is not, is not the earth, they were to do what with it then? Accept it, because they had a prior, they had a previous error. So, likewise, that happened in this movement. At 9-11 and onward, actually. Men have taught that Revelation 18 comes out at 9-11. You can, you can see the principles of it, but that is not where it has happened. Because she tells us it is when they give, Babylon falls when it gives a Sunday law. So it's really pointing forward to the Sunday law when Revelation 18 comes down. But when she connects with it, she says this is the same message that was given by the second angel. And we know the second angel arrives at 9-11. So this is why you can see the elements of it, the, the principles of it, but it is not when Revelation 18 comes down. It's Revelation 14.8. It's the same message. The Sunday law is a law. When we go from English law to Roman law, mm -hmm. where now Rome is in charge, when you get to the Sunday law, you have a law there in the Patriot Act that Amen. demonstrates that America is already on the way to going from English law to, to Roman, Roman law. So the Patriot Act removes all... Um, presumption of innocence until proven guilty. Yeah, you're, you're guilty, so, guilty first. The Sunday law <coughs> will be the same. So, to add to what Mara was saying, that's how you see the same exact. You see a lot of these principles there because, I mean, it's the same. It's the same message, as she says. In a lesser degree mm -hmm. than, than what happened in the <coughs> section. Amen. So, uh, Revelation 18, it, it's, it's, it's fulfilled at. The Sunday law. This is when, when this angel comes down. And we'll, we'll see why we have for one, one TC here uh, lining up with the time of Christ. Reason being, because she directly connects it. Just, just as we were going over last night, when the father says this is A, the child says, yes, this is A. The child has no reason in their mind to why, why they will fight it. They, they, the father said it, and they said, yes, this is it. So likewise here, this is what it's saying. This is it. 2SM 118.2. When Jesus began his public ministry, right here, so when, so when he begins it, 
He cleansed the temple from his sacrilegious profanation. First temple cleansing. Among the last acts of his ministry was the second temple cleansing. So, in the last work for the one of the world, two distinct calls are made to the churches. So, so she takes the line of Christ. She's, and she takes these two things that happened in, in the time of Christ, and she parallels it now to two distinct calls. So the, so the, um, so the cleansing of the temple is directly linked to these calls. The second angel's message is, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 14.8. So uh, we have here the second angel being confirmed because it's now where men fell away. And now they were cleansed out of the temple. So we, this is illustrating to us and telling us how we'll be at the Sunday Law. We're now Revelation 18, where it teaches the same message of Revelation 14. Babylon has fallen because they made this uh, spirit of Sabbath. They forced the world to worship the spirit of Sabbath. This is now when Christ is coming to cleanse the temple. It's the first temple cleansing. And it's showing that those who have accepted the truth, some will go out just as Christ um, did with the Jews in the literal temple. And the, this temple is the church and many will come out of the church because of the trial that's taking place in the Son of Crisis. Continue on. And in the loud cry of the third angel's message, a voice is heard from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So, the first temple cleansing is linked with Revelation 18, um, 1 and 2. Two. Second is linked with Revelation 18, 4, 5, 4 and 5. Come out of her, my people. So now let's look at how this beast came um, came into power in the first place because we're, we're talking about the son-in-law, but there's things that, that, are, that lead up to the son-in-law, and it's all the way back here, but it's when we... When we study more and look, we're we're right we're right at this point here, and this these this point here is very important to um to what will take place in the very very near future. So GC four four two paragraph one. Can we can I have a reader for this? Yes, read. Have a reader for this quote, please. Lamb like horns and dragon voice of the symbol point to a striking contradiction between the profession and the practice of the nation thus represented. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. By such action, it will give the, the lie to those liberal and peaceful principles which it has put forth as the foundation of its policy. The prediction that it will speak as a dragon and exercise all the power of the first beast plainly foretells a development of the spirit of intolerance and persecution that was manifested by the nation, represented by the dragon and the le leopard-like beast. And the statement that the beast with two horns ceases or causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast indicates that the authority of this nation is to be exercised in enforcing some observance which shall be an act of homage to the papacy. Amen. So, speaking of this nation is... It's legislative and what? Judicial. Judicial authorities. So this is how <clears throat> this nation will put forth the Sunday law. When these these two branches speak, when they have to speak and they give give the, the woman its its power. All right. Rashad, how, how much time I have? Seventeen? Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. The judicial, yes, I remember, yes. Text marriage. I never thought about that, yes. Uh, amen. Yeah, because I don't believe the Supreme Court ever really... Yeah, amen, yeah. It, amen. Ah, that's nice. So, next paragraph. 
Such action would be directly contrary to the principles of this government, because the principle of the government is right on this chart. Republicanism and Protestantism. These are the two horns of this, of this, um, of this beast. And we know one horn went down April 19th, 1844, where all the Protestants rejected the Advent message. And now, it's just, now this is just pointing forward to the Son of Law when the Republic horn will fall because the nation, the government, well, put forth the Son of Law. Such action will be directly contrary to the principles of this government, to the genius of its free institutions, to the direct and solemn avowals of the Declaration of Independence and to the Constitution. Next paragraph, 442.3, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. Here, here is clearly presented a form of government in which the legislative power rests with the people. A most striking evidence that the United States is the nation denoted in the prophecy. But what is the image to the beast and how is it to be formed? The image is made by a two-horned beast and is an image to the beast. It is also called an image of the beast. Then, to learn what the image is like and how it is to be formed, we must study the characteristics of the beast itself, the papacy. So you have the IOB, image of the beast, it's the Sunday law. When this nation repudiates the, um, its, its, its two horns and it repudiates, excuse me, not repudiates, two horns, repudiates the constitution, and its two horns are gone, it will make an image of the beast. And she, she asks these questions. What is the image of the beast and how is it to be formed? Then she tells us, to find that out, we have to look back at the first beast. The beast be before that did the same thing. Because it's, it's following the same pattern. So just as I believe Swinon said last night, Satan would like to be like the Most High. And, and if that is the case, Satan will have to counterfeit all the same patterns of which Christ did. So... It's just this beast here will just follow this pattern, the papacy, which is going to pattern itself after, after its mother. The Protestants, the daughters, will um, image it, mirror itself as, after the mother. Next paragraph. When the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the con consciences of the people, she, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was the papacy, a church, that, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. So the church, the religious power, must control the civil government. So the, the woman, the church, will now control the man, as we see with Ahab and Jezebel, her Herod and Herodias. Next paragraph. Can someone read the bold for me, please? Whenever the church... Amen. All right. So she tells that the Protestant churches, which came out from from Rome to protest against the papacy, well, just manifesting a similar desire to restrict liberty of conscience. And we went over this a couple weeks ago, the National Reform Movement. National Reform Movement is the same movement. It's, it's a Protestant movement that wants to go forward and restrict liberty of conscience. They want the, the church to rule in the state and the church to rule over the state. Next paragraph. It was apostasy that led the early church to seek the aid of civil government, of the civil government, and this prepared the way for the development of the papacy, the beast. Said Paul, there shall come a fallen way, and that man of sin be revealed. So apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image to the beast. So all those who are turning away from the message who have turned away from the message and who are turning away from the message, if they do not come back to the truth, this is this is what um this is this is what they will do. They will um send for the civil government 
to go and punish those who rebuke their falsehoods, their, their doctrines. So that's what happened with Christ and the Pharisees. The Pharisees hated it, so they got the Romans to go against Christ. It's always the same thing, same pattern. So that's why it's imperative that these men um, see their sin and repent of their sin and come back. Because right now, they, they, they cannot see and they don't see that they're actually on the side of Satan. Continuing on, when the leading churches of the, of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. So when the leading churches of the United States um, shall, shall, enforce the state, shall influence the state to enforce decrees, then the image of the beast is made. So right here at the Sunday Law, this is where now um, Revelation 13, 11 is now fulfilled, the, 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 the rest of the verse, that is. So we'll... GC 49.2. Carrie, can you read this for me loudly? Yes, please. Amen. So she brings in Constantine. The nominal conversion of Constantine in the early part of the 4th century, it's the 300s, caused great rejoicing, and the world, cloaked with a form of righteousness, walked into the church. And now once that takes place, she tells us that the work of corruption rapidly progressed. So we'll read as we go along. This, this is paralleling. Well, let's put it here. This is 321 AD. This is before the papacy has its power because the papacy receives right here, 5, 538 to 1798. Receives its full power in 538. And this is when it starts to rule um, based upon Bible prophecy. But before she can, she has the power seat and great authority, before she has all of it, the, these um, steps must be taken step by step first. And we must see and understand all these steps because if you miss a step, that means we have fallen. Just naturally, if you're walking upstairs and you miss a step, it's, you're going to fall. It's, it's the very same thing. The natural just teaching the spiritual. Next paragraph. In the early part of the 4th century, the emperor... Constantine issued a decree making Sunday a public festival throughout the Roman Empire. So, this is a decree, it's a law that's being, being passed before she gets this full power for 1260. The day of the sun was reverenced by his pagan subjects and was honored by Christians. It was the emperor's policy to unite the, unite the conflicting interests of heathenism and Christianity. He was urged to do this by the what? By the bishops, the bishops of the church, who, inspired by ambition and thirst for power, perceived that if the same day was observed by both Christians and heathens, it would promote the nominal acceptance of Christianity by pagans and thus advance the power and glory of the church. But while many God-fearing Christians were gradually led to regard Sunday as possessing a degree of sacredness, 
they still held the true Sabbath as, as the holy of the Lord and observed it in obedience to the fourth commandment. So even when this decree is put in place, there's still some keeping the Sabbath. So the Sabbath can still be kept without punishment. Amen. Sabbath kept without punishment. This is just all telling us what's going to happen in the nation we're sitting in at this moment. So when, when we have this, this, this same law that's put, put in place in the United States, the Constitution is still, 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 in, still in effect and it's still working. But when this time comes, in this history now, that's when the Constitution is out, out of the window. All the laws now are, are gone because she just repudiated the principles of the Constitution, Protestantism and Republicanism. Continuing on, 4SP. Do I have a quote? Oh, yes. Yeah, I never had, I didn't put the quote in here. Yeah, she, she, she has a quote. She says it's 3, 321 AD, but the next paragraph sh shows us that from one of the, one of the pioneers. So the Constantine in 4SP 55.2, while still a heathen, issued a decree enjoining the general observance of Sunday as a public festival throughout the Roman Empire. After his conversion, he remained a staunch advocate of Sunday, and his pagan edict was then enforced by him in the entrance of his new faith. So it's a pagan um, edict. It's not a it's not a papal one. It's still still pagan. It's still this. Heathen, heathen statue, but not it's not a a it's not a Christian statue that's being put in place. Amen. Yes, yeah. It, the emperor is still doing it. The, the the head of the state is still doing it. it. Says, but the honor shown this day was not as yet sufficient to prevent Christians from regarding the true Sabbath as the holy of the Lord. So, this history is just now telling us what's going to happen at the Civil Sunday Law, because he put forth a Civil Sunday Law. This is why we call this period here, this, this way mark, the civil son of law, because it's just going to copy the very same thing. So when this time comes, which is typified by 321 AD, when that time comes, you can still keep the Sabbath without punishment. The Constitution is still, still in effect in the United States, but this, this is still not what Protestants want. Protestants want, wanted that. If you do not keep Sunday, I will crush you under my foot. That is, they... they, they they want the same power that they that their mother had. So, continuing on, and then she says another step must be taken. So when this time comes, she tells us another step must be taken so that so that she can ha have the power in which in which her mother had. Ah, no, a nice story that showed that is the daughter of Jezebel, Athaliah. Athaliah went forth and did the same thing that Jezebel did. Athaliah killed. Many of the prophets as well, just as her mother did. The, the, the daughters just wanted the same power as the mother. If you go look at it, look in that story, she killed many, many prophets, a whole slew of them. Um, but anyways, as we continue on. Yeah, and she was the only woman that ruled, ruled in the kingdom of Israel as well, showing us when the woman rules in the, in the, the state power here. And it's showing us the same thing when the woman rules in a marriage. All she wants to do is bring the man under her foot. And that's exactly what's happening. The nation is, all these principles are the same. Go ahead. Okay, okay, yes, 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 yes. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, because yeah, after Athaliah was killed too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, to to kill him. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Mhm. Mm I gotta read that story again. But. Yeah, I was saying that at first, but then I noticed noticed the error in it. But another step must be taken. The false Sabbath must be exalted to an equality with the true. A few years, a few years after the issue of Constantine's, Constantine's decree, the Bishop of Rome conferred on the Sunday the title of Lord's Day. Thus, 
Thus, the people were gradually led to regard it as possessing a degree of sacredness. Still, the original Sabbath was kept. So even, even when this law is put in place, there's still other laws being put in place just to bring them up to this point. Just as it was historically, you have all these things taking place until this time comes. But it would happen rapidly, as she says. Because she says the final movements will be what? Rapid ones. So this, all this here is the final movement. So when this law is put in place in the United States, rapid movements are going to be taking place until that, that point comes. Many laws will be taken, will, will, will be put in place. Um, one second. I want to read these quotes. And... Okay, yes. I don't know why I didn't put them in here. I forgot to. We'll look over, go over this history again. So, how much time I have? I'm out of time. Okay. So, we read some of the quotes yesterday when, when we were meeting that, um, I didn't read the last quote, did I? No, I did not. Jump down to the last bold. Speaking of Const um, Constantine in 321, it says, even this was not an ecclesiastical law. It wasn't a church law, um, law of, of the church at that time, but merely a civil law made by the ruling emperor. So the king is still ruling. The, yeah, the state is still ruling. And it was made in the fourth century after Christ. Too late, it seems to us, to deserve any recognition from Christians as establishing a Christian institution which, which they are bound under penalty of sin to recognize, and besides, it comes from a very, very questionable source. So basically, I just have this here just to show that it was not a ecclesiastical law. It was a, it was a civil law. So it's a civil Sunday law, and it's not what the papacy wanted. She wanted this to where she has full power after just, just Justinian gave her head, um, supreme head over all the churches, yes. Yeah, authority, great, great authority, as Daniel says. So it's the same thing here. So just to bring it down to our day even more, I said previously, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm going to just put this tidbit there to basically like, like bait as a fish or something. I said previously, we are, we are right here before this midnight cry in this history. So here is just here, same period. And this, when, we, when you look at it in a fractal, you look at the, the seven thunders in this fractal, the end is called midway. And right here, this is where we are just before this way mark. Yeah. As, no, we are at this way mark, rather. But we are at the beginning of this way mark. And we will explain that as we go along. We are at th this way mark here. And, and, we will, and it's, this way mark parallels the Civil Sunday Law. It, it's not the civil sun law, but it parallels it. And, and this is where laws will be put in place to pave the way for, for, for the laws that will take place in the midnight cry and the civil sun law, which the civil sun law paves the way for the sun law. And this is why she says the leadings of the Lord are marked. We, and we must know every single step because when the papacy was coming up, she saw that she had to take another step. And we must know Satan's devices. This is why it tells us that if we don't know Satan's devices, this is how he can catch us the easiest because we don't know what he will do. So we must know every single one of these steps. And this is where we are right now at this moment as we speak. This is what we need to understand. This is why all these histories are here just to tell us where we literally are today. As an event as we are watching in the world and we must know what time of the night it is. And we have to know we're at midnight. This is where we are right now as we speak. We have to know what will soon come. So, just as I said, this is the end, and all these ends show, show, the, show, the, show the destruction upon the wicked, but a restitution onto, the, onto the, the wise. And this is what will happen at the end. In this fractal, we have to see these things. We must realize where we are in prophetic history, as she says. So, with that being said, shall we close with prayer. Kind merciful Father in heaven, Lord, we give thanks for this day and for life and strength, and we ask that you may forgive us <clears throat> for our sins. 
Help us, O oh Lord, to, to know, know where, where our feet are now at, at this time. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to keep pace with, with all that you have shown. Help us, Father, to cast off self and sin and to um, hold on, hold on to you and, and your, your word, O oh Lord, so that, so that we might not fall, Father. And we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.